Hey everybody, it's Cruel Con Keith here and welcome back to my channel. No, that wasn't a clickbait thumbnail you've just clicked on. I was sadly involved with probably the most homophobic game ever made called Kill the Faggot. Let's take a look. You wanna chomp my wiener? Ever visit the city of Butt, Montana? I hear there's a lot of buttholes up there. Transgender kill. <laughs> you killed that faggot. And not the good way. He just dropped the soap. Bag down. Can I put my wiener in your bun? <laughs> AIDS <laughs> carrier eliminated. So yeah, um, the footage of just seeing there as disgusting and horrendous as it was was an actual real game that was released in 2015 on the steam green light service and within like an hour or two of being released uh, the shit just hit the fan and i'll never forget it because um as soon as people started googling kill the faggot they seen me associated with it and my band Cruacon. Uh, it didn't take long to clear up my name and just explain that like I had nothing to do with this whatsoever. So how did that come to be? How was Keith Fay and Cruacon associated with such a disgusting game? Well, it all started in early 2015 when uh, a developer called Skaldic Games got in touch with me, a guy called Randall Herman. So I've got a few notes here, I just need to keep popping, you know, looking at it because there's a lot to get through. Randall Herman uh, got in touch with me by email. He's, he was a fan of Cruacon. He's a games developer, so he said, uh, and he's working on a new survival horror game called The Shelter. Would it be possible to use Cruacon's music? Again, he said he's a big fan. I checked him out. It turned out like he had released one game on, I, I think it was on Steam as well. It was available for iOS and, and um, it was a mobile phone game basically called On The Lamb. And that was the only game I could see, but yeah, it was an actual real game. It was out there, and they're, they looked like a real studio. They were a real studio, like. Um, this guy, uh, Randall Herman, previously apparently was a failed Christian footwear. He came up with some Christian footwear or something like that, and the business didn't work out. Obviously, I discovered all this later. Uh, and now he turned his uh, attention to video game development. So yeah, I said I would love to be <laughs> have Cruelcon's music. The game looks great. He, tell, he showed me a few bits and pieces that he was working on. Uh, it was going to be a big Fallout 3, Fallout 4 type of thing. Um, and I would play a non -play, an NPC. No, sorry, I haven't even got to that yet. Cruelcon's music would be featured in it. But he did actually offer me a part in the game to play as a non-player character. Um, and my girlfriend at the time, he also offered her a part. So I was like, wow, so excited. I'm going to be in a video game. He sent over all the, the pages of uh, lines that I had to read out. I booked into Trackmix Studio where I record Cruelcon albums. I spent two days there doing all the lines. And it was so much. And you know, it was exciting to see uh, how games are developed. You know, I have to say the word no in 10 different ways, yes in 10 different ways, different responses to different questions that would come, and it was really exciting. I was so looking forward to this game coming out and being involved with it. Um, he got some bigger names involved, like Laurie Beth Dernberg was probably the biggest um, name. No, obviously, she's not a huge Hollywood movie star, but she was in movies like Dodgeball, so she was a credible actor and she was associated with it. and. There were a few others, so <clears throat> recorded my lines, and that was that. I was just waiting then. Obviously not waiting excitedly, just, you know, you leave it, and when it's ready it'll come out. And then one day, I, I can't even remember, it was around May, was it May? It was, I think it was May 2015, my phone just started exploding. I was getting called out on Twitter, I was getting Facebook messages saying, oh, you scumbag, how can you um, support this game and how can you support this company and you know fuck you Cruelcon I'll never listen to your music again and I'm like what the fuck is going on here like holy shit so I googled and um, one or two people engaged with me they weren't just completely pricks they said yeah this game here kill the faggot you're associated with it and I was like no I'm not what the hell 
Google did. Yeah, I could see that game was was blowing up everywhere and Krogon were being mentioned a lot. So the, the story behind that is in the game, the open world uh, survival horror, The Shelter, uh, you'd have, I guess it was like a pip buy type thing and you could go around and you'd discover um, different cartridges, you can play them on your, your, your PA, your PDA type thing. But you can also find little shitty games around the place and you play them on your PDA. So within the shelter he came up with a, this Randall Herman came up with a few different games and Kill the Faggot was meant to be one of those games that you'd find in the game and you could put it on your PDA and go, oh that's ridiculous and never look at it again. If he left it at that, maybe the shelter would have been released, but he decided to release Kill the Faggot as a separate standalone game on Steam Greenlight. And that's pretty much how I was associated with it. I didn't know anything about it. I was as appalled as the next person. Uh, I've been involved in promoting LGBT rights for years. Uh, I march in the Pride March in Dublin. My fucking younger brother and best friend is gay. So for me to be associated with, an, with such a horrendous game and the LGBT community to be calling me out as a scumbag and just a, a hateful person Wow, that was tough. That was really, really tough. Uh, but look, I didn't waste any time. I got a statement put out straight away. Um, there was a lot of statements back and forth. I'm gonna read out his statement that he put out and you can kind of see where he's coming from in the free speech type of thing. I'm not defending him in any way, but I kind of think he really fucked up here. Is he completely homophobic? Probably. Is he? Kill the faggot video game homophobic? Oh, I don't think so. I think he did really, really fuck up. But uh, let me read out the statement. You make up your own mind. So yeah, he released this statement um, defending his actions. Again, I don't really know his mentality or what he was thinking. He's probably not as homophobic as this game uh, portrays, but clearly there's something going on there that he would release this. But listen to his reasons and see what you think. Wow, surprised how much response the game got. So, some points on why this game was made and released. 1. Our upcoming game, The Shelter, A Survival Story, is a large-scale post-apocalyptic survival. In that game, the character can collect inventory items, one being a cell phone. On the in-game cell phone, the player can play minigames. One of the games that the character can play is Kill the Faggot. Okay, so it's not a pit boy. Originally, this was only going to be a part of the other game, but I decided to release it on Greenlight to see people's reactions. The reason behind this particular game is because of how tired I am of people being overly sensitive and how easily offended people are by every little thing, especially with LGBT issues. I have worked in the game industry since 2007, so I know that's how the game industry pretty much is. I didn't make this game to attack LGBT people personally, and no, I don't hate gays and think they should be treated fairly, but I made this game just to piss off those people that are way too overly sensitive, which includes straight people. These people think that if you are even remotely homophobic, you are hateful and a bigot. If you're remotely homophobic, if you're remotely homophobic, you are hateful and a bigot. That's what the word means. Ridiculous. And do everything they can to destroy you in every vicious way possible. So I decided to go down a path that most developers are afraid to go down. To piss these people off by making the most overly offensive game possible to these idiots to prove a point. The point being that a crappy made video game would offend people so much. I mean, so offended that people will waste all their time posting on forums, Reddit, etc. of how disgusted they are, offended, how much everyone involved in the game should die, and even getting into large debates over it of how worthless and evil we are, etc. Lots of people are sending very vicious and disgusting emails as well, and it just proves that my mission was accomplished in pissing off these people, and how many of these sick people in the gaming world there are that would wish all kinds of physical harm on me. I mean, come on, it's just a crappy made video game by a no-name developer. Why do you care so much? It's obvious no one in their right mind would take this game seriously. If someone made a kill all straight white people game, I would totally play it and have a laugh, as seeing it wasn't made to be serious. Keep sending me all the threats and hate mail, though it's a fun read and proves you have no time in your hands. Obviously this game was made in only a few days, so for people complaining about the game's graphics, ah yeah, who cares about that? People are saying this will hurt our business and future development, we are self-funded and if this game blah 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 blah. Of course we don't endorse killing or murder of any kind, this game is not meant to be taken seriously. Uh, send me all the hate mail you want, but stop sending out vicious hate mail to our actors and licensed bands. They have nothing to do with this mini game. blah blah blah. As for an apology, ain't gonna happen. To everyone that got overly offended, good, that's what we were going for. 
Just wait for our next game we are working on. It's going to be way more offensive than this one. So obviously I read that statement at the time and thought, whoa, no, like this, this is bad. So I got in touch with Randall and said, dude, just, you know, take, take my voice off the game, take Kruikon away. I'm not doing it. Uh, I was in touch with Laurie Beth Derenberg. She was in the same position. Uh, she was contacting Skaldic Games, say remove all the device work I've done. I don't want to be associated with it. And Randall just doubled down and said, no, you've signed contracts, which I had and Laurie uh, Derenberg had. So he just kept, he was adamant that the game is coming out. Kruikon's music will be in it and my voice will be in it. So I started a campaign of getting, just, just putting messages out there. I got in touch with a lot of Irish newspapers who covered the story. And the reaction was just so extreme to Skaldic Games, they just ceased to continue. I got an email saying, you know, actually I'll read out the statement I put out. It's just been brought to my attention that a game featuring my voice as well as my girlfriend is involved in sending messages of hate towards the LGBT community. The company is called Skaldic Games and they've released a game called Kill the Faggot. A disgusting game where you get points for killing gay people and penalised for killing straight people. We did not know anything about this when we agreed to appear, to appear. A statement was released by the games company that tried to explain their intention. The statement was juvenile and bizarre, basically saying if you are offended by the game, you are an idiot. Well, I am offended and I am not an idiot. We cannot condone this game and hereby disassociate ourselves with it and Skaldic Games. We are all for free speech, etc., but not when it's spreading hatred towards a demographic. I think I said a few other things that were picked up by different magazines. Um, I, then I started getting lots of um, different mails from the LGBT community saying, thank you for your support, you're such a great ally. You know, within 24 hours from being this demon and hated person to, yay, thank you so much, Keith. But look, they were only re reacting to what they were seeing in the news. They didn't know my true character. Uh, to the point that the Advocate magazine, probably the most famous LGBT magazine on planet Earth and the longest running, uh, ran a story about me and my support, about the game as well and how disgraceful it was, but also my support and how I got caught up in the whole thing. So, yep, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so you can see it wasn't intentional. I had no idea I was getting caught up in this whole shitstorm. Uh, but I think I defending myself well, uh, people can see my true character, obviously it, you just need to be in my company for two minutes and know I'm the most inclusive person ever. Uh, and that was my involvement with uh, Kill the Faggot. I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and you know what, I look back on it and I think, god damn it, you know, I was almost in a game that could have been good, I mean it could have turned out shit, the shelter may have been terrible, but what if, what if it wasn't? What if it was a great game and I'm there, I'm an actor? Oh man, I was so excited about it. But it wasn't meant to be, so fuck Skaldic Games and the idiot Randall for what he did. Like, just, how can you be so idiot? It, like, his company is gone, it's just gone. Like, whatever years he spent building that company up, gone overnight because of such a ridiculous game to put out. A hateful, horrendous, disgusting game. But um, there you go. So if any game developers are, are watching this and you feel sorry for me and you want to put me in your game, hit me up. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye-bye. If you like that video and if you like what I do on the channel, please leave a like and please subscribe because it helps very much. Thank you.